Good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to a very spontaneous uh, and without notes edition of the news. Um, I hope you all had a nice weekend. Uh, I had a very good weekend, I have to say, from start to finish. Um, uh, from Friday all the way through to this afternoon or this evening. What's the time now? It's half past eight in the evening UK time. Um, and of course, this weekend is for me personally, and for many other, many others, I should say, um, many more others than we've been uh, led to believe. Um, because, of course, uh, there was a large, very large, in fact, I would go along the lines of massive demonstration, um, rally, whatever you want to call it, uh, in London yesterday, and um, it was a fantastic event, um, and i just like to offer some reflections, um, you know, from my viewpoint, and, um, and perhaps talk about a little bit where I think this might be going and uh, how I feel that this may have created a little opening but I'll say that with extreme caution so uh, first of all yes went to London yesterday where um, figures of participants of the demo kind of vary I've heard all sorts from, I mean, would you believe a few hundred right at the beginning, then it was a few thousand, and then um, I do uh, recall that on our way back from London yesterday, we get reports from the police who were flying overhead in their helicopters, you know, the ones that work on Mars, um, and uh, they were suggesting it could have been a million plus. Now, I don't know, because when you're on the ground, you, you, you can't really judge, but I do remember a friend of mine there on the march saying that... Uh, when he stopped dead and let the march walk past him, he counted about 15 minutes before the end of that group of people reached him. So, you know, at a leisurely pace, that's quite a few people. <clears throat> anyway, whether it was a million or 800,000 or whatever isn't really the issue or the point here. Um, what I would like to say is that... Uh, there seems to have been a shift slightly uh, in terms of <clears throat> how many different types of people, um, groups of people, came together in unity to express their views and opinions and um, and their fears, and uh, but in a very positive and optimistic and compassionate manner, which is something we always go on about whether we do the demos here in Bournemouth or, or anywhere else, um, we always stress the fact that it's a peaceful demonstration slash rally, whatever. I don't like the word demonstration because uh, visions of uh, people with knitted scarves chaining themselves to fences outside Greenham Common kind of springs to mind. Nothing against knitted scarves or fences or Greenham Common, but those who know, know. Um... It is a demonstration in that sense, but it's a, it is an attempt to raise awareness um, to this absolute mammoth, scandalous situation that we all find ourselves in at the moment, regardless of what side of the fence you're on, uh, because everybody's been dragged through it, some more uh, consciously than others, um, which is unfortunate for those who kind of know a little bit more, perhaps, or have come across a bit more information than uh, others. Um, Saw a lot of them yesterday. So anyway, so our trek from Bournemouth <clears throat> was went out went, went very very well. And when I say ours, we had lots of different people from our region who went there in different uh, groups, as it were. So the group who I went down there with, we were 18, 17, 18 people, and we basically uh, hired two minibuses, had a meeting point split the group into two buses and drove down uh, to London, parked up a little sort of uh, away from the, uh, the, the whole event, as it were, 
and then walked and, and eventually joined a group that were walking through the streets. Bigger than what I thought it would be, I can tell you that. When we got there, I was very surprised at the size of it. And I was also very surprised, compared with the size of the march, how few police were there. Or let's just put it another way, uh, the police who were there weren't looking like they were about to have a, a, a nice old row and punch up with you. They were taking more of a reserved, low-key, uh, low-profile kind of uh, position. Um, so much so that, I mean, I personally even spoke to one or two along the way, which doesn't normally happen in a rally because they're all busy in character behind their face masks. Wasn't the case yesterday. Um, we saw a lot of them who were there in their kind of short sleeve shirts, white shirts, you know, sort of summerish, looking quite friendly. A lot of them not wearing anything on their faces. Um, now, why that is, I don't know. Was that an order from above to say, please kind of you know, show a bit of empathy with those marching or what? I have no idea where that came from. It's clearly not a health issue because if you were that worried, you'd keep it on at all times, wouldn't you? You wouldn't take it off. So again, another proof that this is all nonsense, which we know it is. I, I'm at pains to keep repeat myself there, to be honest with you, because I bore myself. Um, I'm easily bored anyway. So, But yeah, we did notice that. So we went down there with two... Uh, mini buses we parked up we started walking uh, we parked up in an area in london actually i mean i can i can go into a little bit of detail we parked in an area in london called camden and we then walked from a place called russell square um down to trafalgar square which was about a half an hour walk slowish walk uh on Arriving in Trafalgar Square, which of course is one of those places that quite features prominently in demonstrations and all that sort of thing, um, wasn't a focal point yesterday at all. Uh, certainly not from where I was standing. Might have been for other people. It wasn't for me or the group I was with. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, the police were, there were very few of them. There are a few vans there. They had to be seen to be kind of, you know, uh, um, marshalling it, I guess. <clears throat> but apart from that, it was uh, no hostility at all. Uh, the whole day that I was there, and this is the truth, I saw one incident where the police had a conversation that looked a little bit more than have you got a light mate, right? It was, and that was when they had one gentleman kind of, I wouldn't say cornered in, but I think one of the high ranking police officers wanted to have a conversation with him and they sort of fenced him off, cornered him off a little bit with a, with a load of police officers, may have been seven or eight of them maybe even 10. I don't know. I'd have to have a look. I do have it on my footage. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was all I saw. Um, and they actually let him go right there. Everybody started chanting, let him go, let him go. And and, and he, didn't, he just went back into the crowd and that was it. Um, he wasn't a troublemaker. I think there was a bit of a misunderstanding. But that was the only, if you want to call it negative, that was the only incident I witnessed the whole six hours that I was there. Um, roughly six hours six hours and it felt like about a thousand miles worth of walking as well I have to say London is a big place when it comes to you and you didn't even know you were walking that far because you had music all over the place you had people talking through their megaphones um, it's quite funny because depending on where you were walking you could hear like three or four different messages from different angles plus reggae in the background plus this plus that plus the other and you had a lot of onlookers as well which is another thing that I highlighted from our last demo in Bournemouth that there seemed to be a lot more people paying attention on the sidelines filming us like we're the show going through town now uh, show or no show what that tells me is that there is a raised interest in trying to figure out a little bit more now as to what, what actually the gripe is and of course there are many <laughs> um, so yesterday we had a lot of groups who came together um, groups of um, um, demonstrators dare I say it so there were the classic kind of stand-up type like ourselves who were there for all the reasons that uh, that have led to the uh, you know the, the the pointless exercise that is locked down and um, and of course all the measures that are taking place from there on in I won't go into too much detail but you know the usual thing that kind of irks us uh, and irks a lot more people than they actually like to admit 
Um, anyway, yeah, so no trouble, great atmosphere. I thought the atmosphere was very, very festive um, as well. And, you know, on leaving Trafalgar Square and sort of the friendly police who were just sort of hanging around a little bit, watching us go, uh, we walked and eventually we bumped into a big group of people that ended up then a massive group of people. <laughs> um, and we, we, we more or less found where they were by looking up at the sky because there was a chopper flying around um, and it was hovering at one point for quite a while. So obviously there was something going on below it we weren't too sure where the group of people were we were hearing mixed messages i was hearing different messages to others about where they were but eventually we met up with them and then we then walked and i've got to say if i'm totally honest the first 15 20 minutes of it i was a little bit um nervous a little bit cautious i think it's the better word to use you know uh so not only was i trying my best to hold my phone and get some footage um to sort of capture the moment as it were but i was also also looking over my shoulder a little bit making sure i wasn't hanging around the fringes of it because we know what's happened in the past because i've seen it with my own eyes uh, where suddenly snatch squad type groups of police officers that come in grab you and you're gone um, whereas if you stay in a big group that then doesn't tend to happen yesterday none of that nonsense was going on they let us walk um which was great but uh we walked a lot and you don't notice how much you're walking because you're talking you're on a bit of a you're on a buzz you know your adrenaline is up and in the beginning my guard was up as well absolutely <clears throat> so there were a fair there were a few anxious faces around you know a little bit of you know i don't trust the silence and all this sort of stuff um but as it happens i can say already now nothing happened at all not even something that could have sort of tilted. Not really. I don't. I don't recall anything of the sort. So after I got my first twenty minutes out of the way, I started feeling comfortable, and then I could get on with the business of interacting with people as well as trying to film uh, as well. So I ended up live streaming it on Facebook actually, um, rather than record and do like two or three different parts and put it up on YouTube. I didn't do that this time around. But I'm glad I did uh, live stream it because you've got that live effect. And uh, well, anyway, it's there if anybody wants to have a look at it. It's about two and a half hours long. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> yeah, so I personally spoke to all sorts of different people. I bumped into some ex-soldiers who were wearing parts of the uniform, in this case berets, from the regiments that they used to serve in. Um, I bumped into nurses who um, a lot of them came dressed in their uniforms. I didn't see them, but I did bump into a couple who were from the medical profession and were nurses. Um, and of course, the usual thing that I keep saying all the time, which was, it was just an absolute cross section of society and it really, really was. And, you know, just by looking at the group of people that were out in the streets has to tell you everything you need to know about what's going on here in terms of, uh, being disgruntled with it all and not just disgruntled that's too soft a word but actually you know in fear of our future and that of our children and that of the older generation above us you know my parents generation for example all these people who have been bamboozled into something um that you know that that's baffles the brain quite frankly for me personally um but there we go i'm not the only one who thinks like that so Thank goodness for that. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the the conversations that I was holding was quite good, and I've seen a lot of people having conversations as well as walking and everything else. So that that was nice. Lots of really interesting banners. Lots of good positive messages. Uh, everything from Black Lives Matter, for example, to and there was anti-vax there. There was anti-lockdown there. There was anti-this. There was anti-that. And someone actually asked me, well, what are, you, what are you here for? And I didn't really have an answer, not because I don't know, but because I can't put it into one sentence. It's a bit like someone saying to me, or asking me, what's your favourite music? Well, I can't really answer that. It's not lazy of me. It's actually quite thoughtful. I could, eat, I could be lazy and give you a quick answer, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be very accurate. 
you know. Um, so I ended up having a conversation with this person, not to explain myself, but to try and, you know, make it a bit concise. Um, at the end of the day, this is about our human rights and, and, and our basic freedoms, um, really, when you bought, when it boils down to everything. Um, I don't think that was the one word that was heard the most all day yesterday was the word freedom. Um, and no, I was not tempted to break out into a George Michael song. But so I think that was the thing that united everybody, no matter what kind of angle they would come out, depending on their own sort of personal things or groups that, that whatever represent, whatever they causes they were representing, as it were. Um, so I thought that was good, and you could tell there was a vibrancy there um, in the group. There wasn't this uh, feeling of oh, well, here's another demo. Let's give this a shot and let's see. You know, it was there was there was, there was something different about it um, that. Uh, made me optimistic which is not like me i was bump i bumped into a friend um who i've done a couple of videos with um where we sat in the car talking and um he's always been a, a little bit more positive than me in terms of he's more well you know there'll come a point where that will flip and it will go in our favor and i've always been a little bit more glass half empty and sort of thinking well hmm we can stand on our heads if we want to is that really going to change anything really really uh, yesterday I was not starting to sway the other way but I was trying to think I was thinking to myself if this momentum could keep up and these kinds of marches or gatherings could continue exactly in the same kind of uh, way you know the sentiments uh, you know the behavior of not just the police but also those marching or walking and um, then there is a real opportunity there to actually hold those conversations that we've been craving for all along. Certainly I have, because for me, it's about getting the message out. The message being, have a look at this, have a look at that, have a look at that, or, you know, um, certain things that you can take a closer look at that might make certain things where you've made a decision, perhaps a bit more clear, um, might make people or allow people to sort of rethink their standpoint on things and and you know just give it another thought and and all that sort of thing because i think that's what we have to do it's great to be seen to be doing something but also what's actually happening with that and the reason why i'm saying that is because i had a look i keep looking down here because i've got uh i just looked at <clears throat> the mainstream outlets online newspapers and also um tv channels online and you know it's astounding how little has been reported on in terms of the magnitude the size of the march um, and I have to say while I was there the whole day I didn't see what I thought I would see which is the journalists coming up to people on the march and asking them questions what are you here for you know um and all that sort of stuff, getting proper feedback, doing a proper journalist's job. Um, so obviously we're kind of taking on that mantle more and more and more now. You know, citizens' journalism, as it were, is, is definitely increased in importance because I'm not getting anywhere close to any fraction of truth through mainstream media. And that, that's, that's not me having a dig or anything. That, that's just an observational an observation made and it's a fact you know and today proves it there was mention of some scuffles and some ag uh, some aggression in the mainstream media today for example in fact last night 11 o'clock my landlady knocked on my door and said oh for the first time all day i've heard on the radio that there's been a bit of uh, aggro um between demonstrators and police and i i sort of frowned and thought well i didn't see anything witness anything all day nothing Nothing that even felt like it could, you know, flip into something negative at some point. There was no, you know, there was no excess drinking. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, there was, uh, it, you know, it wasn't. I mean, you got more problems going to a normal football match, seriously, than you would have ever had yesterday. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. I work at a football club. So, you know. And people take their kids to football matches. 
So my daughter would have been with me. She would have definitely come with me yesterday. I mean, in retrospectively, I probably wouldn't have taken her beforehand because I was a little bit nervous about it. But knowing now what I knew, what, what I do, yeah, I would have taken her. And we saw a lot of people take their kids yesterday. Um, oh, I know it was a beautiful day. And you're surrounded by lots and lots and lots of like-minded people who want a better future, a secure future, and a stop to this nonsense and bullshit basically because that's what it is it's total crap the official don't know um you know so there's all sorts of gripes it's gripes with the media because they're not doing their job we know that we've known it for a long long time uh, we've had our experiences with it here in bournemouth where you know people have been given interviews like myself and some of us i was lucky the interview i gave to the bournemouth echo a while back um, I wasn't misquoted, but I know people who were dra dramatically misquoted. Um, that sort of stuff, you know. So the media have been doing everything that's been asked of their owners, as it were, um, whoever they are, and and and, and you know, and, and that's that, that's one massive, massive issue. Plenty of press photographers there yesterday, but like I said, there was no one going around talking to people. I didn't see anybody anyway, and we were all at the main parts of, of where or the, of the actual march itself. So it was, uh, we went down to the embankment, if anybody knows London a little bit. So we went down to the embankment, um, and then basically we, we came out sort of pretty close opposite to the London Eye big wheel. And anyway, the march went on uh, past Parliament Square, before I knew it, we were outside Buckingham Palace. That was quite uh, funny because you can imagine a lot of the comments that were made there by um, the marchers and the gatherers because uh, members of that household are not flavour of the uh, not, not flavour of the week at all and never will be uh, for very, very obvious reasons. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, and... Uh, they were walked up to Marble Arch and then it went on and on at Hyde Park, of course, and all that sort of stuff. And um, actually, it was a bit of a shame that, I, that we all had to drive back yesterday because I would not mind staying the night. You know, it was one of those nice sort of early summer evenings, you know, where it's still nice and light and people are chilling in the, in the park on the grass and people are drinking a glass of wine or a coffee or whatever it is that, you know, that tickles their fancy and just enjoying what felt like a really nice summer evening. Um... And long may that continue. I hope that happens more and more in the future. I, to be honest, doubt it. Because cue some lockdowns, I think. It's inevitable, really. Um, but anyway, I'm losing my train of thought there. But it doesn't matter because there's so much to talk about. And yet, there, you know, I was thinking about it yesterday, driving back. I was driving one of the minibuses um, and, and, you know, Sometimes I'd go in a little bit quiet because I was reflecting on the day's events because it was a big deal. You know? And like many, we were, couldn't wait to get back to see what the Main Street made of it. And lo and behold, nothing was said. Hardly mentioned that there were uh, a lot of people in London with a message or two. But what else did we expect, really? But what was encouraging to get back to that point and made me feel a bit more positive was the fact that uh, you now have people willing to come together even though their, pers their particular causes, as it were, again, not a word I like to use, um, may not necessarily have lots in common with each other. But at the end of the day, it kind of boils down to one thing, or a couple of things, but essentially one thing, and that is, you know, we want our freedom back. We want our, <laughs> you know, I've said this before, they're chipping away our human rights as we speak and there will be a decision that's going to be announced in September because they've been reviewing the Human Rights Act in the UK since December um, the 7th because an independent panel was introduced. Don't believe me? Look up the government website, got it in there. And, you know, so a lot of us know what's going on. And I spoke to a lot of people yesterday and they said, you know, that this is one of the functions of the whole virus um, thing. You know, it's, it's used as a guise to not only manipulate stories and fabricate and all the rest of it, 
but also to get away with certain uh, changes in legislation or whatever, ratifications, tweaks, whatever you want to do, call them, that they normally would never get away with. Terrorism's kind of run its course, so it needs something else. This isn't just plucked out the out of thin air. Let's let's think of a virus. I mean, this has been planned out for 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 years and years and years and years and years in advance. Uh, what we're enduring now, um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Mine's gone off again there on, on a couple of things. So yesterday, popped into a couple of prominent figures as well. Um, certainly prominent here in the UK. One of them was a guy called uh, Mr. Corbyn. He's been in and around this whole demonstrating thing for a little while now. Although I have to be honest with you, I'm always skeptical if anybody's got any links or or anything to politics and or the BBC or mainstream media at all. And they then side with demonstrators and this, that, and the other. I get very, very skeptical about that. I, I just do. Um... I think my reasons for that are quite obvious. If not, I'd have to do a video on that just alone and explain why. But uh, without me mentioning any names, but if you if you've worked for certain institutions, but yet you're you're taking a stance or stand that uh, appears a little bit rebellious or or conspiracy theory kind of orientated, then I'm always very very skeptical. I don't trust that at all. But that's um, yeah, that's just me. Well, in fact, it's not just me. Actually, I know a lot of people who think the same. Anyway, yeah. But we, I, I I really hope that this sort of thing can can happen again in the, in, in the near future. There is one coming up in on the fifteenth of May in London. Before that, the week before that, on the eighth of May, there's one in Brighton. And. If all goes to plan, and I'm not preempting anything here or taking any planning procedure uh, away from anybody, but I think we've decided that here in the Bournemouth area we're going to keep it to the first Saturday of every month as well. And like even you know the last Bournemouth demo was great a couple of weeks ago. Same thing, police, a more low-profile approach. And all that sort of thing. So it kind it's it's you know yesterday's protest kind of fell in line with the actions or or the, the, the you know the um, the measured approach of the police in Bournemouth a couple of weeks prior. So if that's the way it's going to start going, fab. Do I think that? Do I think this has got longevity? Do I think this is the way? This is the trend now. I'm not sure. If I'm totally honest, I'm not sure. Because once another lockdown comes in and once that happens and you, you're starting to restrict people again, as did happen a few times now in the past, then you're going to have the same issues that we've had in the past where if you stray from a group, you'll just be nabbed. Or you'll be arrested for show, of course, only. You'll be arrested for sitting on a park bench near a beach here in Bournemouth. And then when you get to the station, you'll be de-arrested. And all that nonsense, which we've also had here, you know. So it's, I don't know. I'm not too sure where, but how far this is going to continue like this. But I hope so, and uh, and um, and long may it continue. Yeah, but just looking here. So, I posted something today on social media that someone else captured. It's about a 30 second video, and it's one of the police officers who was involved in the fracas that was uh, so well publicised by mainstream starting from 11 o'clock last night, yet they didn't mention the rally at all the whole day. Um, certain elements of them, the main ones. And um, he explains exactly excuse me, <clears throat> what sort of happened, and he makes it clear that it's not a reflection of the demonstration or the demonstrators or anything. Um, you know, in fact, on the contrary, he kind of was thankful and grateful and also commended, as it were, those demonstrators who saw the the aggro because they were actually trying to help the police officers. Um, that's the story that should be going out. Not there was aggro, 
there were demonstrators trying to prevent aggression towards police. That's the story that should have gone, gone out. But of course, they don't put that out. Where have we heard that before? I'll give you another example. Uh, so and so many thousand people have been admitted to hospital with you know what. Right, break it down, look at the amount of hospitals, and suddenly it translates into about two and a half to three people per hospital. The point I'm making with that is, <clears throat> you know, you can flip a story and, and, and tweak it to your advantage and put it out there. <laughs> but the funny thing is, the very news outlets that do this are renowned for being liars as well. This is the point. And again, it's something I put on social media. You know, there's so many people know, allegedly, that not only do politicians lie because they do for a living, but the media do as well because they're owned. Um, yet they'll find that they'll they seem to think it's okay to find their reliable sources of information with these very people and institutions that we so often criticise and and sort of uh, catch out. Uh, you know. So again, it's us doing them a favour, really, because I've said this before, you know, if you had a member of your family act like that towards you, the way the media do, or the way politicians have done, we know, you would have banished them from your family decades ago. You wouldn't give them a third, fourth, fifth, sixth chance. It's crazy. But yet, with these guys, everybody keeps giving them chances and people still feed off that, the, 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 uh, the information that they're, they're giving out. I don't get it. Where's the conviction? You know? Uh, you know, the old saying from Mark Twain, fool me once, and all that. But, hey-ho. Anyway, yeah, I've waffled on a bit there, I've got, because I'm sort of thinking about it, because it's fresh in my mind. Uh, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I'll echo the sentiments of one lady who I worked past yesterday, when I was filming, it was along the embankment, and she put it in one lovely sentence, you know, um, fear, you know, I think it was along the lines of fear is the enemy or something like that. You know, that's what it is. That's what's driven this all. It's in their interest to keep pushing that fear out because it keeps people kind of in that thing where they rather go with what they're told by their doctor their doctor or they'd rather go with what their local news media are telling them or their local newspaper are telling them um, but there we go anyway so I thought I'd just mention that and I just wanted to sort of uh, just pop a quick video out and just um, explain that to you um, I probably won't be on the 15th because uh, I have um, a family commitment that weekend but uh, certainly anything that comes after that, should there, of course, uh, you know, lockdowns permitting and all the rest of it, then I'll definitely be going again to London and I'll definitely be uh, doing with the others, hopefully, you know, what was done yesterday. It's fabulous. Um, and, you know, 